Where have you been? You're late. Your father came back an hour ago. He's been asking for you. Very impatient. Quick, give me your things. Your tea, Papa. But surely after your journey you must be tired. Tired? On the contrary, my journey has refreshed me. Dr. Browley said it was too soon for me to go after my illness. But it was not my going that Browley objected to. It was my reason for going. You know where I have been. To see Uncle Silas? Yes, to see your Uncle Silas. I've told you very little about him, Caroline. You, of course, have never even seen him. When I visit him again, you shall come with me. Oh, please, yes. Has crossed my mind before, but... Only now can I be sure it is safe to take you. Safe? Yes. You see, when he was quite a young man, your Uncle Silas was a fine character. Or a trifle worldly, perhaps. Far more so than I, but a fine character. Yes, I'm sure of that. I'm very handsome. I've always worshipped that portrait in your study. Worshipped? Admired, I mean, sir. That portrait shows him at his best. Before he gave himself up to a life of sin, he was brought to his senses by a terrible ordeal. A man was found dead in his house at Bartram. Silas was accused... Accused? Of what? Of murder. The man was a gambler. He spent almost his last moments gaming and drinking with our uncle. There were motives. Suspicion fell upon Silas. Only I defended him. Because you knew he was innocent. Innocent? Of course he was innocent. That's why I stood by him. Oh, I'm glad you did. And I was justified because, of course, the accusations were proved false. The room in which this wretched man was found was locked and barred from inside. It was obvious that he'd taken his own life. But that was the turning point. Ever since then, your Uncle Silas has remained shut up in that big house, given up to remorse. But was it remorse? That was what I had to find out. So I've been to see him, frequently, studied him like a doctor. His patient tried to help and encourage him to repent. And now, at last, I can say from my heart it is done. He is redeemed. That must be Dr. Briley. He'll be staying here tonight. Dr. Briley? Oh, I can't receive him like this. Well, run along, my child, and tidy yourself. I'll do my best to entertain him until dinner. Good afternoon, dear Branson. Good afternoon to you, Dr. Briley. Is your master returned safely? Yes, sir, none the worse. I'm glad to hear it. I was anxious. Dr. Briley? Yes, my dear? How did you find Papa? In excellent spirits. Just before you arrived, he took me into his confidence. I mean about Uncle Silas. Indeed. Oh, well, Caroline, uh, that is a matter I prefer not to discuss, if you please. It has refreshed him. That was his own expression for it. My dear, you know that I am deeply devoted to your father and to you. But then cannot you believe what he says of Uncle Silas? How is the sample progressing? <laughs> when I can see my title clear to mansions in the skies, is it not? Yes. And then it goes... Now, uh, bid farewell to every fair and wipe my weeping eyes. I misspelled mansions and I had to do it all over again. A whole week's work. A spelling mistake. Your last governess left uh, how long ago? Six weeks. My dear Caroline, I thought your education was completed. You are mistaken, my dear Bradley. I... I fear I must be. Since you've raised the subject, it is by no means completed. Oh, your French is pretty well and your piano forty, but otherwise... Oh, send her to a finishing school abroad. That is the only course for a young lady of quality. But do not let me be parted from you, Papa. Well, not just yet, we hope. Dinner is served. Thank you, Branson. But I've arranged for you to have a finishing governess here. What do you say to that? Thank you, Papa. I hope she will not expect too much of me. But I would like to perfect myself. Perfection is not of this world, my child. One can only seek to improve. Come, come, that depends on the governess, surely. <laughs> and where do you hope to find one in these parts? Well, that may not be so difficult as you suppose. No? Well, goodness knows I'm no authority on the species. <laughs> Merry 
prince. Why are you not in your bed yet? Oh, Mrs. Rusk, have you heard about the finishing governess? When is she coming? How should I know? Pack of nonsense. And what does Miss Caroline want with the finisher? With all she knows, I can hardly keep up with her now. I wasn't asking you. I was asking myself. You go to your bed. Yes, Mrs. Rusk. And say your prayers. I always do, Mrs. Rusk. Uh, well, that's too often. Finishing governess, indeed. If she comes here, she may be finishing before she reckons. That was the true Silas. Why cannot you believe that he is as fine a man today? I was hoping to avoid the subject. But when you tell me that you're taking this governess here on your brother's recommendation... And why I... not, pray? That proves your prejudice. If any should know him, it is I, who have fought, watched, encouraged, now finally triumphed. My dear... But even when I tell you your heart is still too hardened... But still pliant enough to be ruled by my judgment. Judgment. You are very wealthy, Austin. What of that? Perhaps the wealthiest man in the county. And Silas is a pauper, but for you. I tell you, he has no hope of any inheritance from me, and knows it. My fortune is for my child. How can you tell what his hopes and aims may be? Tell me this. Today, did you tell him of your recent heart attack? I did. And of your very slender hope of surviving another? I did. That was the very reason for my visit. And what did he say to that? I wish you could have seen him at that moment. His whole sympathy for me seemed to rise up in a wave of love and compassion. Yes, love and compassion for his own ultimate gain. I tell you, if ever a soul was redeemed, it is the soul of Silas. Time will show that you have been deceived. Deceived? Deceived by your own righteous simplicity. Oh. Forgive me. I shall go to my room. Do not be influenced by what you overheard. He's a most honorable man and my dear friend. But he His was... eyes have not been opened like mine. Nothing can disturb my faith in your Uncle Silas. Nor mine. If only God would grant me the means to keep him encompassed with love and encouragement. Love such as mine for him. Such as yours for me. You do love me, do you not? Oh, no, I do. Now, my child, go to your room. Yes, Papa. She's the new governess, miss. The new governess. I saw her. Papa, is she the kind of person you expected? Certainly, why not? But she looks so strange, like an apparition. <laughs> she startled you, no doubt, in this light. You'll see her in the morning. She certainly will not appear as a strange apparition then. Finally, we offer our humble prayers to the truly penitent. May they walk henceforth strengthened in thy grace, in the path of righteousness. Amen.
Good morning, Madame de la Rougier. Bonjour, Monsieur. Here is your charge. Good morning, Madame. Good morning, Madame. Oh, bonjour. So young and pretty. And what's your name, my dear? Caroline, Madame. That's pretty, too. But I'm no longer so young, Madame. I'm 16. 16? That's not young? Oh. <laughs> Even for that age, she is young, Madame. And innocent. You will bear that in mind, I pray. Oh, may we, of course, Monsieur. So innocent. Ah, Monsieur. Si seulement il nous était permis de tout recommencer, de retourner à cet âge délicieux. Ne pensez-vous pas, Monsieur, yes. que... Yes. Um, Branson, you may serve breakfast. It is ready, sir. Yes, I'm very sure Caroline, uh, Caroline, will be a very good little girl. And I shall love her very much. We shall first ask a blessing. Oh. Mille pardon. Right. Je suis désobéissante. Invulnérabilité. Un vu. Non, 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 mon enfant. Un vu. Vu. Dieu. Vu. Dieu. Les produits d'exportation sont la dentelle, the lace, le lin, the flax, le parfum, the scent, le cognac, brandy. Cognac, brandy, cognac, brandy, cognac, brandy. Invulnérabilité. Invulnérabilité. Vu. 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 Child, you look troubled. Yes, sir. No. Well, I. Well, what is it? Oh, Papa, it's Madame de la Rougier. What do you mean? Madame is a foreigner. She may have been a trifle eccentric at times. She frightens me. Frightens you? She finds you backward, no doubt, and scolds you. Is that the trouble? No, Papa. Then what is? I cannot explain, that sir. That is mere stubbornness. The truth is that you set your heart against Madame from the beginning. No, sir. No, I. Yes. She's a woman of good character. You may trust my word for that. It's not only my word. Hurry, hurry, my dear child. Your hat, your coat. It is time to take our promenade. Oh, yes, indeed. It's a delightful tomb. That is where my mother is buried, and I only go there with my father. And when you have your father no longer... Madame! Regardez! Look! Mais what a convenient bench! Come, let's go there and sit. Mon amant est enterré, la rille on l'a l'air. Et je suis seul à pleurer, mes amours des temps passés. Just now I spoke to you of your father. You looked so shocked. Oh, madame. <laughs> Foolish child. Don't you know the state of your father's health? 
I know my father is not strong. Not strong? And what's not strong? It's his heart. Is it not? I know something when I see a man near his grave. I do not care to think of such things. But that is not sympathetic. You should think of him and also of yourself. You shall be very rich if your father leaves you all his money. Is that what he will do? Why do you ask that? And why should I know? For your future. It's very wrong of you not to think of that. Does your father never tell you of his will? No. No, never. Never? But this is fantastic. He must have made a will. He must have told you where to find it. Has he not? No, you're hurting me. You deserve it. I try to be your friend, to help you, and you tell me lies. Lies, lies! I'm not lying to you. Let me go. And who might you be? I do not know you, sir. Well, that's easily remedied. Whenever I meet a girl like you... Would you be Miss Ruthin of Noel? I am, yes. Kindly let me pass. But to think of it, a beauty, a real beauty. Madame! Try and shout as loud as you can, Madame. I bet she's as deaf as a tombstone, whoever she is. You're insolent, let me go. Certainly, but there's a forfeit to pay for that. <laughs> bitterly disappointed. With me? I believe her to be a good and honest woman. I have every reason to. But her conduct today, what I told you, this man. There may be a perfectly reasonable explanation. Tomorrow I will question her. It's long past your bedtime, but uh, there's another matter which I must discuss with you. It concerns your inheritance. Yes, Papa. Mislaid a book of reference. I must have it. Maybe in my bedroom. Now stay where you are. I shall not be long.
No, don't be alarmed. I saw a light outside, some thief perhaps. I went to catch him, but he made off. But that woman, madame, she's been in your room at your cabinet. Madame, at my cabinet? You're dreaming, child. Searching among your papers. I watched her. Nonsense. But she must still be there. There. You see? Come here. I've heard what she said about me. It's a lie. She hates me, monsieur. How can I get to your papers, even if I wish? The cabinet was locked. Are you in your right senses? I tell you, I watched her. Then why is she here, hiding from us? I tell you, she's a fiend. Oh, believe me, Papa, believe me this time. What should I wish with your private affairs? She lies, monsieur. I swear to you. <laughs> I had a mind to let the law take its course. That is what a common thief like you deserves. But I will spare the law on one condition. Answer me this. Where did you get this key? It's the one of my own. It fitted. Why? What prompted you to spy on my affairs? Someone has written to you about me. I heard it, I know it. A libel, one of my enemies. I wish to find out. You're lying. Not only to me. My brother Silas, who tried to help you with this... <laughs> Does Scarlet have anything to do with him? Heaven forbid that. Tell me the truth. This is the end of me for you. Yes? Thank heaven. Yes. Yes. You shouldn't go in, dear. Let me pass. The will nominates Dr. Brawley and myself as executors and trustees during Miss Brothers' minority or until her marriage. I don't propose to read the will in full, I will, however, enumerate the various legacies which include bequests to Dr. Briley and a sm small legacy to myself as co-executor. To Mrs. Rusk, his faithful housekeeper, the sum of 200 pounds. To Mr. Branston, his butler of long service, an equal sum. And to the Reverend Dr. Clay, incumbent of this parish. Oh, what unexpected generosity. <laughs> Might I ask how much? 50 pounds. Fif oh. Uh Oh, well, well. And the residue... Hold on. What about the existing allowance to Mr. Silas? Oh, I should have mentioned. Uh, that is to continue during his lifetime. At the present figure? No more. At the existing figure. <laughs> Who is this gentleman, pray? Slay's the name of Archer and Slay, solicitors, representing Mr. Silas Ruthin. Well, what about the residue? The residue is left to Miss Caroline Ruthin to be held in trust until she comes of age, unless in the meantime she marries and thereafter to be hers absolutely. Oh, is that all? There is a codicil which is of great concern to Miss Brothin. I thought there might be. Well, let's have it. Codicil to my will. 
I also appoint my brother Silas Ruthin to be sole guardian of my daughter Caroline and with full parental authority until she will reach the age of 21 or until before reaching that age she should be married up to which time she shall reside under his care at Bartram. And I make this appointment in the full knowledge and earnest prayer that she will devote herself to the spiritual comfort of my brother Silas. Does that meet with the young lady's approval? Oh, yes, indeed. I had half guessed that that was my father's wish. Uh, may I ask, is there any provision in the will for the disposal of the estate if Miss Ruthin... Uh, well, sir? ...should not outlive, uh, fail to survive until she comes of age? In that unlikely event, and in the absence of any provision, the property would, of course, revert to the heir at law, the next of kin. Namely, at this present time, her uncle, Silas Ruthin. Quite. Exactly. Goodbye, Miss Rutherford. That cheap Jack lawyer had no right to make you agree to this. But I do agree. It was a thing nearest my father's heart. I know he is watching me now, guiding me. But giving yourself up to this man, if only you knew. Oh, yes. I'll show you to your room. You'll be tired, I warrant. There's a tiny pool from the hall. This is my maid, Mary Quince. Maid? Hmm? Pretty too. And grand. Silk and crepe. Look at me. Threadbare broadcloth. <gasps> dear, dear, dear. Ah! No, no, never go there, miss. That's the closed wing. Get locked up. Always. Only one key. Master keeps that. No, no, never go there, miss. This way. The closed wing? But why is it closed? I don't know, miss. Never been there to see. Nor nobody else. See that door? Master's room. He'll be there now. But he can't see it. When am I to see my uncle? I don't know, miss. He'll send for you when you're ready. This way, when he is. There be his bedroom. Though he ain't too particular where he sleeps. Here it be, miss. Your own little room. All ready for you. Here we are. This is a wonderful moment in my life. And in mine. Let me look at you. Why, yes, you are a Ruthin. And a lovely specimen, too. Lovely? Oh, Uncle Silas. Oh, yes, you are. Even more so than I expected. Still, the family were never deficient in good looks. Your dear father, for instance. What a remarkably handsome fellow. Yes. Uh, sit down, child. And I would have known you anywhere. Because I'm so like him? Well, I mean from your portrait. Oh, that portrait, many years have passed since those days, and I, I dare say it flattered me. No, I, I think you still look very much the same. I can see that you and I are going to be very fond of each other. <laughs> I'm sure we are. So am I. If only I can provide for your comfort. That's my chief anxiety. Still, I've done what I can. I've given you a room of your own across the hall. Oh, thank you. This will warm you up. You're a young lady now, no longer a child. No more lessons, no more governesses. <coughs> no, that's all past, isn't it? Uh, yes. This house and estate are yours. 
and entire freedom to come and go as you please. Oh, I know I'm going to be happy here. I hope so. Great rambling, ramshackle houses it is. Yes. You keep one wing closed up entirely, I hear. I do, yes, sir. How came you to hear of that? Your butler informed me. Oh, did he? You must overlook Giles. I cannot afford a well-trained butler. Now you must want some supper after your journey. And then early to bed. I'm in no hurry. <laughs> I like being here talking to you. And so you shall. Every day. Come and read to me here. As you read to your dear father, no doubt. Not often. Oh, yes, he used to like me reading the Bible to him. He would. And, and so indeed would I. Here it is. Never a day passes, but I seek its message of hope. Hope. And here you are. One of my hopes fulfilled. Ah, uh, Giles, uh, is my niece's supper ready? All ready for her, sir. All ready it be. Then go, my child, with my blessing. Good night, Uncle Silas. Take these for after your supper. Thank you, Uncle Silas. And what is your name? Tom. What be yours? Maybe he's the gamekeeper's child, miss. That's right. Oaks. He be my father. Sepulcher Oaks. Sepulcher? Is that his name? No. They calls him that because he's dumb. Oh, how dreadful. Oh, look at that, miss. Come back. She be my ferret. I am your master's niece. I wish to go through the gate. Where is the key? In the cottage. Well, go and get it. Do as Miss Caroline tells you. Do you want to be told on to your master? No. strike him like that. I am Mr. Ruthin's niece. My uncle will be informed of this. Do come away, Miss. Do. He gives me the shudders. No. I'm going to help this poor boy. No. Leave me alone. It's you that brought me the trouble. Why, you ungrateful little scrub. No. Come along, Mary. You're willing to surrender Caroline's guardianship? Most certainly. If I have her assurance, she prefers to return to Noble. But without that assurance, you'd be wasting your time to make any legal application. Your time and her money, would you not? Come in. Ah, how very convenient. Dr. Wiley. Caroline, my dear, I have to go to London for several months. I felt compelled to make this final effort. Entirely in your interests, my dear. Dr. Briley thinks you may be desirous of opposing your father's last wish. That is the most unfair way of putting it. Unfair? Heaven forbid that anyone should accuse me of that. Uh, but ask her for yourself. You need not. I've told you before. It was not only my father's last wish and his dearest wish, but it is mine, too. In that case, I can do nothing. And thus avoid distressing this dear child any further. Uh, will you take a glass of sherry, sir? No, I thank you. I must be on my way. It's a very strange brand of sherry, sir. That is for myself. I have need of it for my nerves on particularly disagreeable occasions. Good day to you, sir. Goodbye, my dear. Child, show him out of the house! He's a very conscientious man. So honest, he cannot believe others to be as honest as himself. I fear that he has upset you. No, it was your gamekeeper, Hawks. Hawks? Sepulchre Hawks? But the poor fellow is dumb. That does not excuse his being brutal. He refused to unlock the gate when ah, I was... Ah, that accounts for it. That gate is kept locked by my orders. But not to keep me in. <laughs> of course not, my dear. But do not wander far beyond the gate. I like to feel that you're always near. But he struck his little boy in the most cruel fashion. Beasts of the field, my child. They're little better. 
The boy is an ill-mannered urchin. Had you no mother? No. She died at his birth. The same sad story as that of my own dear wife. Poor Uncle Silas. That must have been a great grief to you. Unsupportable. Was my aunt very beautiful? As beautiful as good. Why, even now, I... I can scarce speak of her without emotion. I would love to see a likeness of her. No doubt you have one. Uh, yes, um, I, I keep it in my bedroom. Poor soul, I, I like to gaze upon her in my prayers. I'll, I'll show it to you some other time. Tonight? Yes. But uh, run along, my love. I, I must compose myself. I, I'll speak to Hawks. Susanna, Marchioness of Stoke. <coughs> Tom, come and show us the way through the woods. We're good friends now, aren't we? Oh, look, miss, there's a fine sight. Caroline. Caroline Rothin. Sir? You've never called me that before. I'm Richard. Richard Elbury. Richard, yes, you used to visit Nell with my cousin Monica. Yes, now she's back at Elbston. We heard you were living here, so ever I came. What a lovely surprise. Lovely. Yes, indeed. But no surprise. You haven't changed all that amount. And how is Cousin Monica? Oh, never mind about her. That is, she's coming over to see you soon. Tell me, are you happy here? As happy as I can be. You always told them you were expecting a legacy from your brother. I had to tell them something to fob them off. Very bad policy to put them off with lies. Sharks of their sort. Well, he's not particular about the food one feeds the sharks. Sharks are very tricky fish to tackle. I tell you, Mr. Silas, it's not only the money. They'll be paid in due course. They've heard that before, but they're getting hungry. Ravenous. That's what they can tell. One of them showed me his teeth yesterday, and very nasty they look, too. Who? Oh. Mandeville. Ah. Uh, an associate of my blackest day. He tells me there are still some facts that might come to light about that murder. That what? I mean that very regrettable fatality here. Well, that scurrilous, slanderous rogue to question the findings of the law. I defy him! <laughs> Give him a couple of hundred and tell him to keep his mouth shut. Well, I'll do my best, but I don't know how long I can hold them. What of this girl, your niece, your ward, here in this very house? Are there any measures you can take with her? Several. I hadn't started yet. Isn't it time you did? Yes. Good morning, Slay. Then you're not lonely. Oh, no. My uncle is more than kind. And I have my maid, Mary Quince. Delighted. And this is Tom, my new friend. How is he? Then he's a very lucky young fellow. Take good care of your young lady, Tom. I give her into your charge for the present. You wanted me, Uncle Silas? Invariably, my dear. But particularly now, before I forget it. Yes? This Bible. Your dear father gave it to me. To Silas Rodin, from his devoted brother, Austin Rodin. How he would esteem it if you completed the gift. Completed? Uh, sit here, child. <clears throat> and now add below, and his loving niece, Caroline Rodin. I'm sure that will make him very happy. Why, yes, indeed. What a nice thought of yours. I can see him smiling down upon you as you read it to me at night. A Ruthin, a Caroline Ruthin in full to match the other. Nice, clear hand. There. Thank you, dear child. Leave me now, I'm tired. Tomorrow I have a surprise for you. 
A surprise, a pleasant one? <laughs> Do you think I'd have an unpleasant surprise for you? Tell me. Tomorrow. That's better. Now your numbers. Oh, Miss Caroline. One of the maids has just been telling you about that wing of the house and why it's always kept locked up. It's where that terrible death took place that time and it's been locked up tight ever since. Oh, I'd forgotten all about that. I wonder what it's like. I shall ask my uncle for the key. No, no, don't do that. Don't never say not about it to the master. I did once, never again. He's trying to forget it, I reckon. It is not for you to concern yourself, Giles. What do you want? Master's asking for you. Oh, the surprise. Do you know anything of the closed wing? No, but I can show you another way in. Me? Don't you dare. Dear Caroline, this is my son, your cousin, Dudley. Yes, why, uh, you've never seen him before? He came to Noel. Noel? Yes, he came there to meet a certain person. True enough, to meet you. I happened to be in the neighborhood, and I'd heard reports of my beautiful little cousin. You can hardly blame me if I was a trifle impetuous, but that old Harridan who uh, said she was your nurse scolded me severely. But now we can begin to make amends. <laughs> he never told me of this, the rascal. But come, dear child, you must learn to admire the spirit of enterprise. If you can find no excuse for him, <laughs> your mirror can. But, sir, he has not stated his true reason for coming to know. Caroline, you accuse him of lying. Dudley, you shall take your oath. Where's my Bible? It's always near at hand. No, send him away. Why do you never tell me you met her at Noel? What do you do to her? Nothing. She gave me the slip, but she won't do that down for long. You I can tell you. You fool. Do you know what this means to me and to you? Give it to me. I know how to handle young women. You know. You dare say that to me, you novice. Now listen to me. like that? You don't hide that pretty smile from my father. He is my friend. But then why don't you show him a little more charity? What do you mean? If you weren't so pretty, I could be angry with you. Thank you, I'd rather you were. Has it ever occurred to you that here you are, the richest heiress in the county, and my father trying to maintain you with one foot in the debtor's jail? I can well believe that. If, as I hear, he has to pay your debts. You've never said a civil word to me yet. Why do you hate me? But you don't. You're just afraid to follow your natural instincts. Come, give me a kiss. Oh, oh, cousin Monica. Oh, thank heavens you've come. Well, my dear, that's a violent way to greet an old acquaintance. Uh, I was escaping from a new and very nasty one. Oh? As I say, my dear cousin, I never knew you. That was forbidden. But I knew of you, and that was extremely tantalizing. Those days are over, alas. Alas, you say? Alas for you, who've now left behind the guarded speculations of youth. Oh, thank you. For myself, I rejoice that the past is but an evil memory. Yet from what Caroline tells me of your son, there seems to be a distinct echo. Can you blame a young fellow for having an eye for beauty? I suppose not, if it's in the blood. But Caroline was happy here, until he came and planted his elegant boots on the furniture. Yes, if she were half as happy as I. I was, and I want to go on being so. Of course. But I repeat, my firm intention of taking her back with me for Christmas. It'll do you good to have a little gaiety. Oh, but Cousin Monica, my morning. Yes, indeed, our morning. It does not affect you. You're not invited. <clears throat> it might set you off again. Hang the conventions, anyhow. 
I'm sure you'll agree with that sentiment, cousin. Well, Satan urges me to be selfish. <laughs> but go, my child, if you wish to. Oh, yes, I do. It will break my heart to part with the child, even for a short while. Oh. Go and bid your maid to pack your belongings and her own. Are we going now? Certainly. I will come and superintend. Oh, I'll tell Mary at once. After all, it's only three days to Christmas. Why should my poor horses make the journey twice? Oh, yes, we, we must be kind to the horses. Indeed, you must. Mercy me, this is all very precipitant. I've not yet even purchased a child a modest you'll take gift. The best you can make her will be to get rid of your son. I'm afraid he's too ambitious. Did Caroline ever speak to you of young Lord Ilbray? Ilbray? No, 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 I think not. He will be of my party. Trust me, your niece will be a Viscountess one day. So cheer up. That should mend any social reputation, even yours. Goodbye. So bold and grand do I appear With my bold tribes of Britons by my side I've come to close the air I'll fight the fiery dragon With my hand will I slay And by it queen the king of Egypt's daughter Away dragon to death we go Christmas present for you. This all gets more and more wonderful. It has to, to do you justice. There, my dear, a real evening dress for you. And about time, too. Oh, Cousin Monica, it's the first I've ever had. It's heavenly, isn't it? It will be. I hope not. Angels always appear lamentably heedless of the fashions. You shall wear it at my New Year's ball. Then we shall see. Splendid. Must go. Some of my guests are arriving already. Now, don't worry, my dear. It's most satisfactory. What do you think, Quince? I, I'm beyond utterance, my lady. That's a good thought. I wish I'd more of it myself. <laughs> There's nothing more to be done, Mary. Oh, yes. The angels have given in. Thank you for waiting for me. I, I wanted to see you. Do you like my dress? Yes, of course. But it needs this to set it off. Oh, but I... No, Buts. You stand still and let me put it on for you. You're very good to me, Richard. You always have been. You must know why. It is a beautiful locket. I, I do thank you. That's not answering my question. But it seems to have a very difficult clasp to do up. I took good care to get one like that. Come, come. We're waiting for you. <laughs> is there anything the matter? Nothing. Nothing at all. Huh? <laughs> Tell her, Colonel, will you? Tell her what? She's wanted. She's wanted. She's wanted. She's wanted. She's wanted. She's wanted. Who's wanted? She's wanted. She's wanted. You're wanted. Tell her. Tell who what? You're wanted. Who by? The Colonel. The Colonel. What for? I don't know. Men waiting. Come across. What's all that? 
Colonel Butler. What's he want? He doesn't know. He better be careful. <laughs> Doctor is serious too. Really? He came on purpose. He's never met me. What's it this time? The doctor. Doctor too? Oh, well, I'm not surprised. He said it's serious. He came on purpose. Tell him he came too late. Oh, my lady. Oh, oh my lady. Wait a moment. Keep quiet. The doctor said he's had to be bled. Well, that's very flattering of him. Urgent letter from Bartram, my lady. Very urgent. But you didn't write. We did. Oh, very good, my lady. What's he saying now? Colonel Butler again. He's anticipating. Caroline, dear, I'm sorry to stop you, my dear, but you must see this letter at once. It's from the doctor. Your uncle is very ill. Ill. A carriage has been sent for you. Yes, I must go to him. I must go to him at once. Please, tell them to go on dancing. Poor Caroline. It is most inconsiderate of your uncle, but it can't be helped. I will ride over and see you soon. Goodbye. I'll see you to the coach. <laughs> Tomorrow, at the gate, at ten. So this is not goodbye? Of course not. It'll never be a goodbye for long. Oh, Richard, it's been so wonderful. Why must it end like this? End? This is only the beginning. child. I fear I must have alarmed you. I'm often subject to these feverish night attacks. You are really better. Completely restored. Away with all this paraphernalia of leeches. You're my true remedy. Oh, then I mustn't leave you for long. Leave me? Why? Where are you off to now? Lord Ilbury is riding over. I promised to meet him. Oh, very charming, I'm sure. Except for me. 
Hasten back. You find your patient downstairs. Wait. I've not quite finished. I beg your pardon? This document with the name scrawled all over it, what folly is this? I found it. Someone has been copying it, my writing. Copying? Now, who would do that? And why? Come, the truth. But it is the truth. I found it in your Bible. Caroline, not only do you utter a falsehood, but you're associated with the Holy Testament. You do not think that I wrote it, do you? No. No, not... not you. I should hope not, indeed. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, sir. Caroline. You're very punctual. Then when I come to meet you. Tell me, is all well here? Yes, I found my uncle very ill last night, but this morning he is much better. Oh, I am glad. But the trouble isn't only my uncle. Who then? Is that son of his still here? Yes. What's he been up to now? Well, I hardly know, but last night I found a scrap of paper with my name written all over it. Oh. My pure and bashful little cousin. You can't be civil to me, but you can go to market with this carpet bag cavalier. I've been waiting to meet you. Now is your opportunity. Nothing much. You are, I can see it. Your cheek. Don't worry about me. Perhaps that will teach him manners. I'm only sorry you had to see it. Oh, never mind. Mind yourself, sir. Take my horse round to the house. Yes, sir. We're going to see your uncle. So it seems that Caroline needs safeguarding in your household, sir. And by heaven, she shall have it. May I inquire, sir, whether you're in a position to safeguard anything? I mean, you cannot even regulate your own manners. I beg your pardon, sir. Oh, I think you would. When you burst in on your host without warning or announcement. You must forgive him, Uncle Silas. His anger made him impetuous. Evidently. But I thought you disliked impetuosity in your admirers. Now, perhaps you'll introduce me. This is Lord Ilbury. Of whom I have spoken to you. Have you, my dear? Oh, yes. Uh, may I ask your intentions, my lord, in constituting yourself her guardian? Curiously enough, I understood that was my privilege. I find it difficult to answer you, sir, in Caroline's presence. But it is my duty to press you, sir. She is my ward. I have not yet spoken of my intentions. We are somewhat boldly claiming to protect her. I think I'm entitled to inquire your age. I am 21, sir. And she is 17. Come, come, never mind what the future may hold. Her happiness then as now will be my most cherished item. I'm gratified to hear you say so. And I'm gratified that you are gratified so much for that. Shake hands, I beg. <laughs> now, let us take our eyes off the distant horizon and view the immediate prospect. I must go abroad, Caroline, and at once. Abroad? Yes, another illness such as this, and I should go the way of your dear father. The surgeon who obligingly came and blooded me was most urgent about it. Then you wish me to go abroad with you? Ah, uh, you read my thoughts. I must have you near me, dear child. I've decided for Lausanne. Now, would that not please you? Well, yes, very much. And your health must be considered. Then after six months, we'd make the grand tour and return here. That is if the Almighty pleases to restore me. Nearly a whole year from home. I shall be happy to go. Have no fear on that score. Then, sir... If this prospect meets with Caroline's approval... As she has just assured us, yes. Yes, well, apart from eagerly awaiting her return, what can I do, sir? Uh, you must apply your own answer to that. 
Please forgive my not escorting you to the door. Caroline will do the honours. But until Caroline leaves, sir, I think I'm entitled to the... Say mark. no more. You, sir. I've endured enough from you. I've been told what has occurred. You drunken, dissipated rascal. The son of his father, eh? This is the last of you. You shall leave the house at once. I've no wish to stay in this rat-ridden kennel. To hell with it. On the contrary, that is where you're bound for. Small doubt of that. And you shall go by the recognized route, westward by the first available schooner. Let her come too. She'll find better company than Baron Barncock. Enough! Out of my sight, you blot! Pack your miserable belongings! At least some good has come on my visit here. Please. Come, Richard. Please. Good day, sir. Are you content with this plan? I must do my duty. To your uncle? Yes. But it is not your real desire to go, is it? <laughs> for my own sake, I would rather stay. And for my sake, too? Yes, of course, Richard. But I have to do this. It's all part of my promise. Oh, well. I shall be leaving Elveston tomorrow. But I shall be back in two weeks. You will not have left by then. Oh, no. And two weeks is not very long. Only two weeks too long. Sally, you startled me. I've got to set our plans in motion at once. Our plans? In motion at once. You, my good girl, the post chase for Noel goes this evening. I've bespoken you a seat. This evening, sir? Leave my young lady so soon, but why, sir? Yes, because your young lady herself will be on her way tomorrow. But you first spoke about going abroad only this morning. To your obvious pleasure, you were delighted with the proposal. Well, yes, but I didn't know... And I knew you would be. So I completed my plans all in advance, so that nothing should arise to disappoint you. Now, was that not considerate of your old uncle? Well, yes, I... I'm sure you mean to be. Come in. Oh, it's you, Giles. Just come to Terry, Mary Quince, got in the coach, all right. Wouldn't have, though, if I and her. Thank you. I will not be down tonight, Giles. I have a headache. Tell my uncle, please. Ooh. All right, then. And send one of the maids up with my dinner. Maids? All gone, miss. Bundled off. Send home. Only me left. I go tomorrow at dawn. What is the meaning of this? Don't know, miss. Better ask him. There it is. I don't know. But I'll fetch you dinner, miss. Wouldn't do. Cook it myself. I'll fetch you, miss. Giles? Yes, miss. Oh, nothing. Thank you, Giles.
to see me, so happy that you cannot speak, is it? Why are you here? Why have you been sent for? Tell me what it means, tell me. Because I love you so much. You think you can keep away from one who loves you as much as I do? Don't mock me. <laughs> this is all like a, a nightmare. I am a nightmare, huh? No, 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 no. Now I find you. You think I let you go? Never, 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 never. A fiend, you called me. You and your father. So let him come now and save you from the fiend. From his grave! Why do I find you here? Because you choose to pry into secret places. Uncle Silas. Yes, I'm here, my little eavesdropper. What are you going to do to me? What should I do? The place you in safekeeping, my little treasure. Here alone. You send everyone away and your son has come back. My heart's softened, but he'll not molest you. And now her, this woman. And I pray to heaven I might never see her again. Why is she here? At least tell me that. That is easily explained. To take you on your journey, your former governess. A lady of unimpeachable integrity. Vouched for by your own father. He found her out in the end. It was that which brought about his death. You hear that, monsieur? She bites me like a snake, the snake I've nourished in my bosom. How dare you make such an accusation? I refuse to go. I well, refuse. Refuse? I must refer, I see. Don't touch me. But don't touch you. I have a mind to chastise you. No, that's for me. I, who have waited so long for you. Leave it to me. There. Down on your knees and seek forgiveness. And remember this. Hitherto, my love has fondled you, but it is still that same spirit of love that now chastens you. She found you out before I intended. Ah, keep her safe until tonight. I don't need your advice. You'll post these letters in London. Cheerful farewell from Caroline to her friend. Lady Monica Waring. Oh, ho, Dr. Brad. Some of my best work. <laughs> Shows more spirit than I gave her credit for. Don't arouse any further suspicion. Deal gently with her. Of course you know how gentle I can be if I want to. Madam, I organized this reunion purely for business purposes. Take me away from here, dear cousin Monica. For pity's sake, take me away. Well, what of Satan? Has he fled? Yes, sir. Very well, you may come downstairs. But remain in the house, do you understand? To be near me, dear child, in these last hours. Before your departure. Come in. No, miss. Why? I've no time to tell you now, but you must go to Elveston with this letter for Lady Waring. Oh, but, miss. Do what I say. I will let you out. Here's your ball of go this way. 
don't fail me, Tom. No, miss, I won't. But I wish I knew what is the matter. I'll tell you all that later. Go now, quickly. Do not rob me of your company during your last moments here. I've informed your trustee, Dr. Priorly, of our plans and told him they have your full approval. Yes? Yes, sir. You've always been happy with me, found me loving and indulgent. Yes? Yes, sir. And you're willing and eager to make that pronouncement to all your friends. Yes? Speak up, child. Yes, sir, yes. Then account for this, you lying little hypocrite! This letter you bribed that wretched boy to take to Cousin Monica. So much for your prayers of atonement, you sinful little wanton! Take her away! Take her away! To have to! A respectable female like me! Caroline! I cannot let you go like this. Oh, how could you hurt me when I love you so deeply? I can't believe you any longer. Don't harden your heart. Remember, I'm coming out to join you. Then when I see you again, let all this be forgotten. Will you? Tell me, will you? Yes, gladly. If, if only you... Oh, dear child, that is all I want to hear you say. Now the end of your journey will be for both of us the beginning of a new life. Why, London? Yes, first class. these letters at once.
How do you like Dover? Now I know it's all a plot. I go to bring some food. What are you doing here? You should be safe in that room upstairs. Safe? What is happening to me and to you? Two days ago, you embraced me, bade me farewell, with tears in your eyes and words of comfort on your lips. And here I find myself back in that dreadful room, the clutches of that, that awful woman, and worse even, of doubts and and fears, unimaginable things. How can I resist? I do not know what it is I have to fight against, except I'm struggling, not knowing how to escape. Not knowing what it is I have to escape from, except you. You, my loving, smiling, gentle guardian, standing over me, waiting. Waiting, gloating, for what? What terrible cruelty has got hold of you? You wish me harm. I know you do. I know you do, and I can see it in your eyes. But even now, you cannot be so cruel as not to have pity. What do you want of me? Is it my money? Take it, take it all, take it, it take it, It is not take yours it. to give. You have not the disposal of it. Then it is my money. Take it, I say. I will sign anything. Only let me escape from this. This woman. It was the murder woman. I know it now. I know it now. You can fool me. works more quickly than our mind. <coughs> this claret should be nicely warmed by now. <coughs> yes, but, but will it put her to sleep? It will with a little of this in it. I see. Is that how you dealt with the bookmaker? Have you no delicacy? This will put her to sleep soundly enough for our purpose. Yes. I can only do it if she were asleep. If she were conscious, I... Now, now, be a brave man. I'm in beside you. We're in this little game together, you know. Help me, Tom, help me. Don't you 
What? <coughs> Elvis <coughs> and Lady Monica. Lady Monica. Mm. You hate me. Mm -hmm. You wish me to go. All right. I do go now. You'll be alone. All alone. Time you left. Come out here. You hurry me too much. My brandy. Yours indeed. Give me that key. Now remember your orders. Down those stairs and out to Hawks's cottage. later tonight. I brought you some wine. Come, it will help you. Very well, take it later. You may be glad of it. know what you miss. But it's no good you're going to Bartram. She's left. That's exactly why I'm going. I set out immediately I got that letter. I simply called in here on the way. I had a letter from Caroline too, written just before she started for abroad. She seemed delighted with it all. Oh, yes, a charming letter, no doubt, like the one to me. Perfectly phrased, spelt without a flaw. So I should hope. And spelling was always her weakest point. I used to laugh at her about it. When I can see my title clear to mansions what in the sky... What on earth are you talking about? Have you ever had a letter from her before? I have. Dear Dr. Brierley, about my father's bequest, B-E-C-Q. I tell you, she never wrote those two letters. They're forgeries. Dr. Brierley! But surely, Dr. Brierley, you don't think that Silas wrote them? I do, and why? What's his motive? That's what I mean to find out. Oh, if I say any more, I shall be rude to you. And that's just a warning, because I'm Pardon going to... me, lady. Uh, is Dr. Ryerley staying to dinner? No, thank you. I can't spare the time. What a pity. And you'd have the most appropriate dish. Stuffed goose. <laughs> Oh, Miss Caroline! Oh, what happened? Miss Caroline! What happened to you? Miss
Куда? What do you mean to do? But you, I tell you. It was you that did it. There, there, dear boy. Don't give in. There's no time to lose. But I can do no more. I won't. Oh, yes, you will. Oh, I have done with that. Every moment is precious. A box in there. Come. Give me that. Let's be careful how we dispose of it. But first, we must dispose of something else, mustn't we? But I can't touch her. I won't go near it. Oh, come, come. Be a brave fellow. I wish we had some light. <laughs> Ah! Uh. 